Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What is something you have always regretted doing? Getting into debt. I can't see a way out. Edit. Wow thank you for the love reddit. Just put little one to bed and fell asleep for a few hours and woke up to 200 plus notifications. I'll try to read them all. Edit 2. Appreciate all the advice so much. I've joined our forward slash lab and our forward slash personal finance. Due to my job I am unable to look at solutions like bankruptcy and an EVA. I will look at the other options suggested though. Thank you very much for reaching out to point me in the right direction. I just got back into debt. I expect home ownership to be worth it, though. Home ownership is honestly the best excuse for being in debt a person can have, in my mind. Feel so bad for you man. Had an unexpected life situation come up this year that will actually allow me to eliminate all my debt, but the money didn't come in a happy way. Not going to go back there again. It is so easy to go there I don't blame anyone who finds themselves in over their heads. Or I'm sorry to hear that. Just make sure you definitely don't do it again. Consolidation. This was a lifesaver. Now instead of like 5 payments a month, I was able to get a loan that consolidated everything into one payment. Added to answer all the questions. I went through my bank of 20 years. I had never missed a payment with them and was a loyal customer. I applied for a loan online through the website and was denied. The following week, I called in and was approved within 1 to 2 business day. I didn't get the amount I asked for but I got enough to pay of all my debt at the time which was only two credit cards. And I needed some dental work. Don't get a capital one credit card. They will fuck you over with a few things. Really high membership fees which you can't opt out of. And insurance which was $89 a month. I tried cancelling this and was told number. So, when I got the loan, I said fuck you C1, and stayed with my bank. Cancelled and paid off the C1 card. The terms of the agreement was a 7-year loan. It's been 3 years of making payments. I've already paid off $8,000 because about once or twice a year, I'll throw in a lump sum payment. This shaved off 2 years and 2 years of interest. With being at home for the last year due to the pandemic, I also managed to build up a savings account. I was offered a line of credit and accepted it just in case which I only use for emergencies. I use the CC for groceries and things online then pay it off each month. The only reason I got into trouble was that I got sick and had to leave my job and went on EI. It doesn't pay much. I had three months where I didn't have any work due to the recession. I had to use the credit card to pay rent. Sometimes shit happens that you don't plan for. Now I'm doing okay. The loan is more than 50% paid off and my card is paid off monthly. And I have a savings account just in case something does happen. I'm not saying this solution is for everyone. But it definitely worked wonders for me. It was a life changer. Yes I've done them but it's just such a huge chunk of money each month. Only one payment though. Glad you sorted yours out X. Not protecting my hearing. I'm 52 and have had theatres for 20 years now. I should have worn earplugs when mowing the grass, going to concerts or loud movies. I shouldn't have turned my Walkman up to 11. How do you deal with it now? I also think I'm starting to get it, the occasional ringing in the ears. I don't want to lose my hearing. Pretty much nothing there's no cure and your ears don't heal over time. It was very sudden. I woke up after a concert with my ears were ringing and it never went away. Now I just do the things I should have done years ago, wear earplugs and turn the volume down where I can still hear. I've gotten to where I barely notice the ringing but I can't hear conversations clearly unless I'm looking directly at speaker. I just pretend to listen when a waitress explains the menu to me at a noisy restaurant. When my parents split up my mom had to raise us by herself and we were really poor. Eventually we had to get on food stamps to survive. My mom was devastated. She was a very proud woman and was working two jobs but it wasn't enough and it absolutely crushed her to have to get assistance, it made her feel like a failure who couldn't take care of her own kids. I remember we were in the grocery store and getting ready to pay. She was going to use food stamps to pay and she was so ashamed that she turned to me and said if you don't want to stand in line with me you don't have to. She was trying to spare me the embarrassment. So I didn't stand with her, I went off and looked at a toy or something. 
I remember looking back at her. She was sheepishly fixing her hair and trying not to look poor as she worked up the courage to face the cashier. I have regretted walking away so many times over the years. I was just a kid, but I wish I could go back in time to go stand next to her and tell her how proud I am to be her son and how thankful I was for the sacrifices she made just to keep food on the table for us. It honestly breaks my heart every time I think about it. Can I tell you something, as a mother that was once in that same situation? Whenever it came time to pay, I would always tell my daughter to go look at something for me. I was so embarrassed to have to use them, and this was a long time ago, so it was the actual Monopoly money looking food stamps that you had to count out and tear out of the booklets, I never ever wanted her to see it. Your mom is glad you walked away. I know it hurts you, and that says so much about you, but in that moment, it took a tiny bit of the pressure off of your mom not to have to be ashamed in front of you. You sound like a great person who has an amazing mama. Edit, thank you for the awards, I appreciate it very much. Edit, part 2, I'd like to clarify, the shame wasn't necessarily about using public assistance. It was about knowing I had brought a child into a life that was bereft of all but the barest necessities and by the very action of paying with food stamps, people could look at me and decide that I was failing as a mother. Even that would have been bearable if I didn't agree with them. Their faces were just mirrors of my feelings about myself. Fui, she turned out great. She graduated high school and college, the first person in our family to do either. She's a successful engineer, wife and mother. She has a comfortable life, and she loves me and we talk every day and see each other once a week for an overnight. To the person below who asked me why I would ever have a kid, it's a fair question. I was 16. I had a traumatic home life and statistically was pretty likely to end up right where I did. I waited too long to face it to be able to have an abortion, and I didn't put her up for adoption because the idea of giving her away and someone hurting her was more terrifying than keeping her. It's not an answer that paints me in a good light, but there you go. Have you told her how proud you are to be her son lately? I think telling her how you feel would go a long way towards easing your guilt. She probably doesn't even remember the incident. I have, and one of my main missions in life is to make sure she doesn't go a single day without knowing it. She's an absolute saint, I've never met a better person in all my life. Becoming a nicotine addict. Cigarettes almost killed me twice in one year, when I was 34. I always thought I'd be one of those old duff people still smoking. Reality had a different idea. How exactly did they almost kill you? Drugs and drinking all day. Me too. Clean and sober now, but the damage is done and the consequences are for life. Same here. Some people will only ever remember you at your worst. I struggle with that. I regret and dot regret this one. I was 13 at a theme park with my class. It was our last day of school so we went to a big park to ride some rides. For no particular reason, other than thinking I was funny, I kept telling kids in my class dot die as they would climb onto a roller coaster. Some kids looked scared, some laughed. Finally a 20-something guy with his girlfriend also in line turned to me and shouted kid, shut the fuck up. His girlfriend quickly tried to calm him down and said he's just a kid. Boy did he look pissed. For me, it was like I had been slapped out of a trance. I thought holy shit. I'm annoying. Best thing to ever happen to me I think. But damn do I cringe when I think about it. Dude, these slaps hit like a bus. One minute you feel great about yourself and the next you realize you're super annoying. Not everyone has those moments. Some continue to live in ignorance of their annoyance. Did similar shit when I was 9 to 11 and trying to be edgy. Every time I'd hear my parents finish talking to someone on the phone, I'd ask so, who died? At first they'd grit and say nobody, but after a while they got pissed and said along the lines of, you need to stop asking that. Don't ever ask stuff like that when I'm on the phone. It's disrespectful. You don't know if someone you know will die. I think they were much harsher words than that though. It hit me like a rock and I never did it again. Something similar to this happened at a job once. Told to me by a co-worker. Our boss would frequently pull people aside and have one-on-ones to kinda see where everyone was, amazing boss, and one time as he was pulling someone aside, someone goes oh looks like you're getting fired everyone laughed cause we used to joke about it frequently. Turns out the person was getting fired. Made for a real awkward moment when the boss told them later to not say that anymore when he pulled people aside. 
This may sound odd, but saying yes over and over again to everything my parents want. It's really hard for me now to say what I really want because I was always like yeah sure mom. And dad I'll do that so you are happy instead of doing what made me happy. Edit, I know edits suck, but I feel less bad now. Thank you everyone. I guess we all need to go our own ways and sometimes say no. Trying to please my parents is why at 40 I'm getting braces and need to get a dental implant. When I was in high school I had an eye tooth coming in weird that was screwing up my front teeth, but I still had the baby tooth, so I told my parents I'd rather have the incoming adult pulled and deal with the consequences when I was older. This was all because I felt bad any time my parents spent money on me, despite the fact they were comfortably middle class. I'd go back in a heartbeat and change that one specific decision. They're also kinda why I got married and divorced twice but that's a longer cavo.